What's going on, everybody? Welcome back today. We're going to be talking about the top 10 characters within Heroes of Middle Earth. This is a list of just the top 10 characters, like the characters that will make a difference when they're on the field for you or when you're fighting them. We're going to just talk about why they're the best characters currently within Heroes of Middle Earth. Talk about what makes them so powerful. We're going to break that all down in today's video. So if you guys do find this video helpful or informative, make sure that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's dive right into it. So in terms of your top 10 characters, luckily there's only one here that is not obtainable by free to play players, which is nice. <laughs> We're going to start by talking about who I think is one of the most impactful characters within the game. And that is going to be Halbarad. Now Halbarad is farmable within the challenge token store. It's going to take you two months, two to three months to farm him up if you're free to play. But when you do hit level 30, you do get an offer for him for the unlock for $20. And honestly, I don't condone spending on mobile games, but if you are going to buy offers, that's probably one of the better offers you can buy in the game because this man is an absolute monster with plug and play potential. He's probably the top plug and play character, I'd say, within the game. And it all has to come down to his rugged medicine ability, where when fully upgraded, he will heal all allies for 10% of his max health, plus another uh, another 1,000 or 2,000 on top of that. And doing the math, he will basically heal for a little over 3,000 when maxed out, which is an absurd amount. So yeah, this rugged medicine, shorter cooldown at four turns. He does some solid damage on Northern Storm. If you want to bring in Mir Miri, he does even more, but I don't recommend bringing in Miri. And also this allows him to taunt and gain deadly. And there is a nice synergy here down the road for Rangers when, when and if Rangers become a better team. But also his basic attack here can inflict weak minded, which reduces the resistance on the enemy target. So you're getting a character like if you pair him with the Rohan team, especially with Eowyn and Eothane, you get counter on uh, you get counter here on Halberad with Eothane. He counters, he puts weak minded on someone for two turns. So they're wide open now to getting hit with negative effects. So if you need to put ability block or you want to expose them with Aothane's basic, now that's much easier to do. So this is uh this is a really, really big uh this is a really big negative effect here. This is gonna really help out in arena, but he's also become a mainstay of PvE teams as well, with the healing, the tanking, he has the highest health within the game as well. So he is uh he is ov overall a very strong plug and play character one of the top 10 easily for me and now going over to the shadow side now we have bolg bolg is the other character you're going to farm within the within the challenge store and he's also really really good and it's mostly because of his leadership which is just it, it's it's broken just how good this thing is he buffs all orcs trolls and misty mountain squad members and that they have a good chance to gain advantage. They also gain resistance. This an advantage is basically guaranteeing uh, a critical hit on the on the next attack. So this is uh, this is just absolutely absolutely ridiculous. He saw, he deals solid damage. He's a top damage dealer in the game in terms of the damage stat. He can apply disrupted on no escape. His bone breaker will apply disable, which is an ability block. Shorter cooldown on that as well, and has some decent damage on his basic. But then also his legacy of a Zog, while below 3% health, gain 10% damage. So he once you start taking him down, he's going to start dealing more damage, which is absolutely crazy. He can also gain stacks of provoke to uh, force you to attack him, which then means you're going to be knocking him down to lower health much quicker, which means he's going to get more damage. But the leadership is why you really have this guy. This is just this is, this is the lead you're going to see in Arena if people are running a Shadow team because of that advantage. Throw this on something like Gaz Ironhide, who, spoilers, will be on this on this, uh, on this this list. Uh, this advantage is just absolutely bonkers. You get advantage and you get might on, on Ironhide at the same time with this. He's just going to absolutely wreck shop. So, yeah, this lead, just on the lead alone, Bolg automatically makes it into the top 10 
but top tier damage, really good debuffs with him. This is hands down one of the better top 10, one of the better characters you have in the game. And now for the one character that is not free to play friendly, Ruhu the Brute, we're just gonna call him the Troll Brute. Uh, you will buy him out of supply sections. He's in there for gems. He's not there right now for me, but he's, uh, he is a, he is spending only really to unlock him. And he is just an absolute monster. Number one, his Earthshaker ability, two turn cooldown that will always inflict expose. And when you max it out, will inflict expose for two turns, which reduces the armor on the targets by 50%, which is just nuts. This being a two turn cooldown, absolutely ridiculous. His monstrous war will gain even at level one will grant might for one turn to all squad members. And you start upgrading it, starts putting days on random enemies. So once this is maxed out, you already get might on your team and the entire enemy team gets days, which reduces their focus by 50%, which is huge. There's a lot of debuffs that you have to watch out for in this game and having days on the entire enemy team is just absolutely bonkers. And then toxic blood, not only are they getting poison, which is a damage over time effect, but also reduces their incoming healing. So if you pair him up in a way in that you can force a provoke on him, like for instance, fuse Naraz, Naraz can put provoke on troll allies and they're going to attack him. They're going to take damage over time. But they're also going to get this reduction in healing. And that also applies to the fact that he's such a threat that people are going to want to focus, focus him down in the first place. So they will be attacking him and they're going to be taking this damage over time. They're going to have reduction in healing. So yeah, this, uh, this is just an absolute monster of a troll here. Probably the best troll in the game. Gaz is right behind him. We might as well talk about Gaz as well. And that Gaz and the Brute are both very, very good. And the, unfortunately, you can only have one of them in your roster at a time. So both, uh, both trolls really good. Gaz has two very strong damage dealing abilities that do damage to the entire enemy team. His special taste of iron will dispel one boon from each enemy, which you only need at level two for that. And then once you're up here at level six, this gets docked down to a four turn cooldown and then rampage where, yeah, you will want to use a Mordor team around him to really kind of reach the full potential here. But even without that, this still deals some really, really solid damage. Child of Mordor, he gains some bonus max health and armor makes him a little bit more durable. And then if you start taking damage, this Spear Bash is going to deal even more damage, which is great. So Gaz and Brute are both top tier characters. They're both trolls. You can only choose one. And we are seeing Brute be used a lot more in your Whale Arena comps because the Brute is just so much better with the uh, with the Expose and the Might. He's just better than Gaz, which is not to put down Gaz. Gaz is still really good and if there's one large character you're going to be bringing if you're free to play, it's going to be Gaz every time. Gaz is just really, really good. Now, we can also talk about Naraz. Naraz is another character in here. And Naraz is part of my PvE arena comp. And while you can only have one troll in your group, Naraz allows you to bypass this with his Child of Moria, which allows you to summon a troll Stonebreaker, who, if you uh, if you go and look at his, at his abilities... He gets two AOE abilities on short cooldowns. He starts with Heavy Stomp right away, but then Mountain's Might, which is going to inflict stun on one target enemy, which is solid. Like, stun's really good. There's not a lot of characters with stun right now. Fro is another character with stun. Fro's not in the top 10, but Fro should be because the Dwarf kits are just absolutely bonkers, but there's no real synergy with them. So maybe one day we'll see we'll see dwarves start popping up in the top 10. This is just the, the Giant's Burden ability. I don't know why it's glitching out like that. It does that. But yeah, the summon here with Mountain's Might is great, but also what I was talking about earlier, the synergy with trolls here and that he can grant one stack of provoke to a troll ally, prioritizing, prioritizing the, the troll Stonebreaker. But if you've got Brute instead of, if you just have Brute on the field, well, now you put that provoke on Brute and now you're gonna get poisons on the enemy team because of that provoke. So this uh, this one, he's he's a little bit, he's on the lower end of the top 10 for me for sure. He's one of the weaker ones, like the reliance on the troll synergy does make him top 10, but it also does not make him as powerful as some of the other characters here. It's just this Child of Moria summon. Plus, you know, you do get the Mountain Medicine, which is a block 
from uh, on block on your allies and cleansing banes from self and a random ally. Get this reduced in stamina cost. So yeah, he's uh, he's part of my PVE squad right now. I'm running the Isengard trio with Gaz and with Naraz. So that he, he kind of rounds things out there. But one other one we need to talk about here for Shadow and talk about Mordor is going to be Shagrat. Uh, this Lee. <laughs> yeah, this one's this one. This one's ridiculous. This is just absolutely broken. And I have a feeling that when fully upgraded, we're going to see Mordor teams in arena, especially up in the meta quite often because this lead where they get squad members gain 2% turn meter per Bane when hitting an enemy with a Bane up to 4% additional turn meter. So it's uh, it will it will cap out. But the fact that you can basically use this with Gaz. So if, for instance, let's see, where is it? Yeah, Splash of Green where you use this, and if you have Grimlers on his team, which is part of the Mordor team, you get poison on the entire enemy team, and then you follow up with the AoE ability from Gaz, and that's just gonna start driving the train on the turn meter for Mordor. Mordor is going to be a top tier team for PvP, at least. Possibly PvE, we'll see how things go with PvE. They're, they're usually pretty good about balancing, de uh, about making debuffs not so good against uh against raid bosses this is uh this is my lead for shadow pve squads and it's all because of i am ugluk this ability right here when an isengard squad member inflicts a bane heal all squad members for 2.5 percent of max health isengard members gain five percent bonus focus uh yeah this is uh this is really really good campaign missions are all about sustainability and this really 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 helps uh, the, the trio, the Isengard trio of Ugluk, Maurer, and Dunhar, and then two other characters, that's a lot of healing that you're going to get with this team. So, yeah, you have him, you have Maurer, Muhar, Mal, Malher, I don't know. Malher also really fills in with this. Has some nice synergy there with Ugluk on this, calling, uh, putting debuffs on that. And then Dunhar will, flip, will fill out your Isengard trio. Dune Heart has a heal that can also inflict debuffs on the enemy team. He has heal block here on his special, and his basic will inflict bleed as well. So lots of debuffs with those three. And that's kind of the core of your campaign teams for Shadow, are those three, you fill it out. Gaz is an easy choice. If you got the Brute, you'll put Brute in instead of Gaz. And then Naraz is who I use, though once I get Bolg unlocked, I will put Bolg into my Shadow campaign team over Naraz, because Bolg just really helps a little bit more lots of damage with him lots of debuffs so yeah uh Ugluk is how you build the core of your campaign pve team and for shadow and that's that's really why he's here in the top 10 so uh moving on from that we need to focus on some light side characters not as uh not as many of them as shadow that does not put down some of your light side characters starting off with eowyn here i mean this is uh there's really not much to say here Valiant Protector can grant might to all enemies. You can get stamina reduction costs on this. She can cleanse banes and put defects, or sorry, put disable on the enemy team. And then when you fully upgrade this, she gets bonus damage per bane cleansed. Her lead is really good in that if you're using a Rohan trio with Aomer, Aothane, and Aowyn, you get some really good assist and counters here. Aothane will put counter on your team. Then you get bonus crit chance with those. Aomer calls assists. He can also assist through his basic kit or through his, uh, through his passive. So really, really good overall. And then also Eowyn, she can gain counterattack. Her counterattacks deal bonus damage. And then she also gains bonus uh, bonus turn meter when a Rohan ally is affected with a Bane, which is going to be common because Eothane is going to taunt. And then, yeah, so she's gaining turn meter. She's going to gain, she's going to go faster, which means more Valiant Protectors, more Break the Cage, more defensive blows. Also this, she stacks defensive so much. Yeah, uh, there doesn't. I don't know if there's a cap on how many defensives someone can get, but Aowyn's probably gonna be the character that breaks it one day, because <laughs> she's just—it's just absurd. All the assists, all the counters. She's getting so many stacks of defensive. It's crazy. So another one on here is gonna be Pippin. Pippin, if you're running PVE, if you're running a free-to-play team, Pippin's gonna be an easy choice for you, especially since Halbrad's gonna take a while. Number one, you have Old Maggot's Mushrooms, which cleanses Bane's from squad members and then heals. You can also reduce the stamina cost of this down to 3-4 instead of 4-5. Four, 
And then also Life of a Party. He can grant might to all squad members. And then his basic can dispel boons. So if you put counter on him, and uh, or you gave, are able to call him to assist, say you're targeting someone that's got a taunt on them, well, he can dispel that taunt, and then you're free to go after someone else in arena. So part of your light side, uh, part of your light arena teams, usually you'll see Pippin there, though with people starting to buy Halbrad packs, Halbrad will replace Pippin, but Pippin's still really, really good. Also the fact that he can cleanse Banes from random squad members, and he's one of the faster characters in the game as well. 172 speed, which is absurdly fast. That's blistering fast. He's going to move often. He's going to cleanse Banes. Really overall, just a really, really good, good, good light character. And also we have Aothane. Now, if you're free to play, this is going to be the tank that you're definitely going to get for, uh, for you in Arena. And he's unlocked very early on. Number one, his Sentinel Stance will gain turn meter to your will grant turn meter to your team. Show of strength will apply counterattack for your allies. And then his basic exposes, which is a reduction in armor, like how we, how, how we were talking about with the brute and the expose on his AoE ability. Now you get exposed here with this. And at level four, you now get two turns exposed with this. So you call him to assist with Aomer. You call you get him to counter through his uh through his show of strength. You're going to put Expose on for two turns on someone, which is huge. Uh, that's, that's very good. He gains a little bit of bonus max health. I don't really worry about this too much. But the turn meter boost here, if you're fighting against a team that does not have Aothane, this is a massive, massive advantage. Especially when you upgrade this to level 5, it's 20% turn meter to your squad members. So your squad members are usually going to be going first. Uh, yeah, this is, this is just huge. Um, there's really nothing else to say here. If, you, if you've played these types of games, you know how important turn meter boosts and speed bar boosts are if you're playing Marvel Strike Force. Uh, speed is king a lot of the times, and with this, you've got a faster team now. So there's really nothing else to say there. I think that is going to wrap things up here. Halberad, The Brute, Bulg, Eowyn, Ironhide, Ugluk, Eothane, Naraz, Pippin, and Shagrats. That's going to wrap up the list here. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys have someone different you would put within the top 10? Do you think I missed someone? Do you think I was off the mark with someone? Let me know down below. As always, if you guys have enjoyed this video, found it helpful or informative, make sure to hit that like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.